If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight. Sun Tzu said that. And I'd say he knows a little more about fighting than you do, pal, because he invented it. And then he perfected it so that no living man could best him in the Ring of Honor. So you clicked on this video and you're now staring at the screen like it's a fridge at midnight. You've been feeling like Tarkov has lost its flair, but you're still binge watching YouTube videos of me destroying people with a revolver. Right? So then you get the urge to play and you fire up the game, but before you even get a chance to get in trouble, you get all anxious because you haven't played in forever. Or maybe you did. But anyhow, you fire up the game and poop your pants. I mean, it's no secret that Tarkov is more unforgiving than your mother-in-law at a family dinner. And that's why I'm sharing some key principles that will make you a better player. Increase your chance for survival and revolutionize your Tarkov experience. So today, we are turning you from a lost puppy to a wolf pack leader. From a couch potato to a marathon trailblazer, from a rubber duck in a bathtub to a great white shark in the... from a karaoke singer to... All right, let's cut to the chase. My playstyle is like jumping into a pool of sharks with a nosebleed. I'm all about chasing those gunshots and getting every last bit of loot. Not the textbook approach, but hey, who reads textbooks for fun? It's about the risk, the thrill, and a dash of... Ah! But trust me, there is a method to this madness. Now this isn't just about having eyes on the back of your head. It's about being Sherlock Holmes in a war zone. Every step, every shadow, every sound, they're like pieces of a puzzle. And I'm here to solve it, so watch closely. Kind of heavy. I think it's a group. We got two. Third guy's top floor. Okay, two more. At least. I want to take out one. Zero footsteps. Can't panic. Two guys. Okay, we got four. Where's your friend? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. They're all juiced. Dude, we just ran into them. I thought I was gonna die here. Oh, we're good. Oh, that's a nice M4. We got the fourth one somewhere here. Wait, 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 wait. 
Oh, look at this. Okay. He jumped on the fence. And I headshot him right here. Uh, do we just loot and go? Somebody could be crabbing around. When we got close to this building, somebody was shooting a sniper. Not sure who that was. Looks like a player. You gotta be shitting me! What did I say? It's a player! <laughs> now, I, I can't be sure if he was with these guys or not. Okay, we just killed five people. Now, before you go ahead and leave a comment about how you would have been back at the lobby when this happened, let me give you a piece of information, or 20. So I'm on my way to crash site to extract, and I hear some nades go off. If you want to live, you simply go around and extract. It's not that hard to stay out of sight. It can be, but we'll talk about that later. But I'm in it now, so there is no turning back. Let's break down the battleground. Streets of Tarkov, Concordia Apartment Complex. Two buildings, a huge courtyard, and a construction site with a mounted machine gun on the top floor overwatching one of the buildings. So why that many grenades in a short amount of time? Well, the answer is quite simple. Multiple squads. And I'm going in blind so they could be anywhere. And this is when I make my first mistake. I notice I have a little bit too much weight on me. And knowingly going into fight, you want to be as agile as possible. The least you can do is drop your backpack in a bush. Of course, what you wear is also gonna matter, but again, we'll talk about that later. Jeez, give me a break. My second mistake was not pre-popping a painkiller. My choice is propital, as it also regenerates your health, but you can also go with a morphine or an ibuprofen. It's a single slot item and it has 15 uses. Now here's when I get the first clue of where they are, and I'm caught out in the open, with the red car on my right being my closest hardcover. I slowly back away because I hear multiple footsteps, and I don't want to run because they don't know I'm here. But if you're wondering why I'm not inside the building, well, the short answer is, there is a lot of broken glass on the floor, and even if they were to come from that side, I would know. I miss my chance to take out the guy in one shot, and he starts suppressing in panic. Now the car saved me, so what I'm trying to do is lean my head and turn in a way that the car obscures him. No line of sight, no chance of success. Now I don't want to lay down because the second guy could flank me any time. And they also have a bunch of grenades. And this is my chance for redemption. He shot a whole bunch, so I'm guessing he needs to reload, which gives me more than enough time to get ready. But I get a better idea. I decide to bait, like I'm gonna run away. Now you could call it a dice roll, but I trust my aim enough to try. The second guy pops out immediately. They're starting to panic, because they're wasting ammo and they're doing nothing. So I could tell he wanted to end this quickly, especially led by the fact that I had also missed all my shots. Well, prior to this one. And now I'm behind cover, and he's not. Now what am I doing all this time? Identifying gunshots. And I just heard a 545 AK. But now my cover is blown, so I run inside. Okay, two more. At least. So I reload, patch up, and finally drop my bag. I decide to lay low and play hide and seek a little bit. Now you're probably wondering why this guy didn't shoot. It's simple, he thought I was his teammate, and I call this a lucky kill. Which tells me there is at least one more player, and when I say at least, I don't know how many dudes from the other team are alive. So his teammate is close, and I'm not too comfortable with the layout of this building. Too many windows, broken glass on the floor, too many angles to cover. So again I decide to move. I catch him out of position, but the length of my gun said no, and this tells me he's smart because he didn't re-peek. 
So I hear him pull out a nade, and I use this chance to reposition, but also bait him into thinking that I'm running away. Also, by this sound, he's got a foldable submachine gun of some sorts, like the SR-2M or the MP7. Unfortunately, I miss another chance. I toss a grenade myself and reposition again, now having a much wider angle to cover, as well as an escape plan. And turns out this was a good decision, because eventually he looped around and I caught him off guard once again. The only difference, I didn't miss. And scouting out the area once again, but why aim at the floor? Because when you ADS, you get a little bit of zoom, and this is where you want to look. I saw this guy, most likely the lone survivor of the previous fight. So it's been a journey of gunfire, strategy, and a little bit of insanity, but hey, that's Tarkov. And before we dive deeper into the chaos, let's lock in three golden rules we've learned so far. Environment is key. Every corner of the map is a story waiting to be read, so keep your eyes peeled and ears open. Those seemingly insignificant sounds, they're the whispers of where your enemy lurks. That's an SVD. Are you gonna headshot me? Dude, I'm so f***ing fast. Anticipate. Don't just be a player in the game. Be the game master. Think ahead and predict your enemy's moves. It's like chess, but with more explosions and significantly higher stakes. And finally, embrace the chaos. Don't shy away from the madness. You know, sometimes the best strategy is to be the storm in the calm. Confuse, surprise, and when they least expect it, that's when you strike. I thought I had it on single. So armed with these insights, you're not just walking back into Tarkov, you're stepping in with a game plan. So remember, situational awareness is more than a skill, it's your secret weapon. Use it wisely and play smart. Now remember when I said it's not that hard to stay out of sight? Let's revisit that. Having a fighting mindset is one thing, but doing stupid things is another. This is what happens when I drop my guard on streets of Tarkov. The raid had just started and I know I'm encircled by players, cause the spawns are nearby. And yet, I decide to do this. Let the marathon begin. So I can be mad at the game or at this guy, but who's really at fault here? I could have taken the back alleys, snuck around across the street, taken the high ground, or simply moved slower, you know? The possibilities are all there, so let's continue. In the world of Tarkov, patience is a virtue, and slow and steady often wins the race. And yet knowing that, I'm the guy sprinting in the opposite direction. Yes, you heard that right. While Tarkov rewards the campers, rats, or cookies, here I am flipping the script. In my mantra, know the map, own the game. Knowing every alley, shortcut, and hidey hole in Tarkov isn't just for show. It's about knowing what to look out for. That's a dangerous spot. Hello. You got a follow up, buddy? Hello. Goodbye. But there's a catch. This isn't easy, especially flying solo. So I rely on my decision making and map knowledge. When you know the terrain like the back of your hand, you can turn even the most stressful situations to your favor. 
feel like I'm expecting a headshot every second now because I'm just doubly keen. So my safest bet would be to just sit in this bush. Well, that's wrong. Everybody knows this bush. You have really good area coverage, but I personally scope it out whenever I can. Oh, two players, or three. MP7. I got shot from my right side, and he probably expects that I'm just gonna run forward, so instead... Somebody's on my right. Can I see him? He was scoped in, so he didn't have this angle covered. In my peak, although risky... Hit him. He's gonna flank me and shoot me from behind. Suspecting he's gonna flank around, I don't waste time. I go back to the famous bush and try to intercept. And having moved right away, I should be there first. Also, I want you to remember this scav, as he plays a crucial role in this raid. Impacts. Where'd you get a Packer? I'm just kidding, Packer is great. Having overstayed my welcome at this side of the lumber mill, I flank around the sniper rocks just to get a better angle on the shacks. And what do you know? I spot another player doing the exact same thing I did five minutes ago. The only difference? I anticipated his next move. I see the tracer, but I can't see the dude. Don't panic. This is an AI sniper scout. Someone's over there. Spotting another player moving left to right, I try to catch up as much as I can and get a clear shot. <laughs> that was him. That's our boy. Wait, could be more. Okay, that's an AI's calf. Get in Tark mode. A term popular among the escape from Tarkov gaming community. So what did we learn so far? Memorize your battlefield like your favorite takeout menu. Every alley, every room, every sneaky escape route. This isn't just a map, it's your playbook for survival. Know it, use it, own it. Second, strategy is king, but flexibility is the crown jewel. Have a plan for every game, but be ready to flip it on its head when needed. Adaptability is your second secret weapon. And lastly, you have to be the one to create opportunities. While Tarkov might reward the cautious for those who dare to defy those who rely on agility and wit the rewards are just as sweet if not sweeter so embrace the challenge master your maps and let your gameplay do the talking because sometimes going against the flow is the best way to stay afloat he's like at the back left now i think somebody's here oh i'm dead i got him i got him it was two people nice holy shit Wait, you're dead? Yeah, yeah, he shot me, like, just as you killed them, I think. It is two guys. You're in RBST, yeah. Oh. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that killed me is in RBST. Oh, he's here. He's got an RPK, what the hell? Blech. Well, 
Yeah. Why am I like this? Where? Ow! Two guys! Yeah. Three guys. So let's shift gears and tackle a beast we've all wrestled with, overconfidence. Yes, confidence is key, but when it spills over into arrogance, well, that's when Tarkov bites back hard. And I was guilty that raid for feeling overconfident, tossing the preemptive nade to make my presence known, but let's see how overconfidence can set you back. <laughs> Players. Давай, мачи! I got one player. Don't know if that was a player as well. Oh, we got him. Don't tell me they got Kaban. That is not fair. We got come on. Uh oh. Three players. Of course. Concrete fucking curtains. It's not a 1v1. GG, NBR. So confidence in your skills? Essential. Thinking you're the Chuck Norris of Tarkov? You're probably not, and that's where the trouble starts. So here's a reality check. Tarkov does not care about your win streaks or how epic your gear is. It'll chew up and spit out the overconfident with a devilish grin. So how do you stay sharp? Well first, adapt to learner's mindset. Every raid, win or lose, is a lesson. Stay eager, and most importantly, stay open to the fact that there is always more to learn and that there is always someone better than you. Respect the game and your fellow players. In Tarkov, anyone can be a game ender, from the rookie in the bushes to the veteran on the rooftops. Don't underestimate them. And finally, reflection is your best friend. Got Tarkov? Instead of blaming the game, take a moment to reflect. Could you have played it differently? And that's how you become better. But fair, everybody's always geared up to the teeth. I'm a poor soul, everybody's got more gear than me. Choosing your loadout in Tarkov is all about balance.
Heavy armor might make you feel like a tank, but remember, tanks can parkour. It comes down to adapting your gear to your playstyle. Are you the silent assassin, or do you prefer the kick the door down approach? So choose wisely because your gear can be your best ally or your worst enemy. So you gotta find the sweet spot. Keep in mind though, gear is not everything. But here's an example. I'm a scav, I got a broken 545 AK and PS rounds. And on the other side of this shelf, we got a couple of geared players. Now the problem with this now is if I jump out, they might be looking this way and I don't have the armor to tank the shots. Nor do I have the, you know, ammo to uh, take him out quickly, so. I'm gonna go for the face. We got one. Oh, oh, oh! That's an MP7. Damn, that hurt. And I don't have a bandage. Check this guy. Uh-oh. This guy's scared. Of course he's scared, he just... His friend got shot by a scav. Yeah, they're geared. Oh, oh, oh! End of the hallway. That was smooth. Oh my god. Now the first guy had a gazelle, and I was kinda lucky because he didn't have a face shield. But see, had I gone for his armor, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. This way I hit him in the face, and the ammo didn't really matter. And this is where the intimidation factor kicks in. I moved aggressively, jumped the first guy, and shot the glass, so his friend was like, okay, he's not messing around. But you can see how your timing and movement outweighs what gear you have. So here's an example of why having a secondary when trying to snipe pays off. Also, try to remember all the things we talked about in this video when watching this raid. Dude, everybody's gonna be rocking a FLIR. The FLIR is one of the thermal scopes in Tarkov, and it's extremely useful on woods. It's gonna be a bunch of thermals. Well, let's at least try to finish the quest. Ooh, okay. Alright. Being drawn by the grenades, I run across the road and toward the sunken town. Now this hill area is very tough to fight in, and I could have gone around, but I knew I wanted to stay away from the beach, but I also wanted to keep the high ground, and with that in mind, of course I wasn't the only one. The second enemy is right below me. Pay attention to how I keep my head down without skylining on the rock. And at this point, I don't want to push because one, I don't know if there's a third guy and two, I'm not exactly sure what gun he has. So I need some more information before I make my move. I got them both. It's the tracksuit. Ha ha! Dude! You know, when you know, you know. So I looted him quickly and carefully moved to the USEC camp. Now this place is a gold mine of goodies. With a couple of PMC spawns, it can be dangerous early raid, but I should be good here unless somebody from the other side of the map is rotating to loot or do a mission. Somebody's here. They're players! What the hell? <laughs> I thought they were scabs. 
Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we're ditching the UMP as well. Get him. He's still not dead, bro. I think we're good to go. Slow and steady wins the race, right? I definitely got thrown off balance by the sprinting player scav, and I sure as hell wasn't expecting a fourth PMC. But again, you live and learn. So you have to understand the dynamics of your gear. Weight affects speed, noise level, and stamina. It's like deciding between wearing a tuxedo or swim shorts to a sprint race. Context matters, and no single loadout is perfect for every situation. You gotta mix and match based on your mission, and sometimes less is more. Other times, more firepower means more fun. And finally, let's talk synergy. Your movement should complement your gear choice. Heavy gear, you gotta move methodically. Light gear, simply use speed and agility to your advantage. So it's not just about the firepower, it's how you use it. Gear upright, move smart, and you'll be the one calling the shots. Also, don't be afraid to experiment with your shooting. Flick shots are my favorite, and 60% of the time it works every time. Do I fail? Sure. Does it eventually pay off? But now, let's tackle a demon that haunts many a Tarkov player. Gear Fear. It's that nagging voice in your head that whispers, Don't take that gear, you will lose it. But here's the hard truth, the invaluable lesson. Gear Fear is the silent killer of potential. So let's break free. We've all been there, hoarding that shiny high tier gear, saving it for that special raid that never seems to come. But hey, gear is a tool, not a trophy. It's meant to be used. Dude, what is with the tracksuits? A FLEAR! And come on, it's pixels. Borrowed pixels. What's the point of having the best gear if it never sees the light of day? The moment you let go of gear fear is the moment you truly start playing the game. So how do I do it? Lose gear, gain experience. Every piece of gear lost is a lesson learned, a story to tell. Sure, losing gear can sting, but the sting fades while the experience gained shapes you as a player. In this game, fortunes can be lost in one in the blink of an eye, but the skills you acquire, they're yours to keep forever, and believe it or not, they transfer over to other games. So I urge you, next time you log in, take that gear you've been saving, step into the raid with the intent to use it to its fullest, and of course, be prepared to lose it. And even if you do lose it, you'll walk away richer in courage.
But now let's shift our focus to a crucial aspect of Escape from Tarkov that can make or break your raid, team play and communication. See, in Tarkov, going solo can be a thrilling challenge, but when you step into a team, the game changes. It's not just about your skill anymore, it's about synergy. And I always say, a successful team is like a well-oiled machine. In every part of that machine, a proficient solo player. It's like forming a band. Sure, you can be a great solo artist, but when you harmonize with others, the music you create reaches new heights. Are you coming up third? third? Yeah. Okay. I'm close. Hello. <laughs> Oh, there's a guy at the end. Got him. <gasps> now, the cornerstone of any effective team is communication. It's not just about calling out enemy positions or loot. It's about conveying plans, intentions, and even your gut feelings in the heat of battle. And in the chaos of Tarkov, a single miscommunication can lead to disaster. He sprinted off towards two-story. Did he pass it already? No, I, I have no idea. I think he probably has, yeah. If he, if he didn't stop, he has. I just heard him. Shit, I'll try to chase if I can. I'm chasing him, but I'm doing it slowly. Yeah, I'm chasing him too. He could be in second right now. He had a tree backpack, I think. Got him. Oh, nice, man. But here's the kicker. Before you can be an asset to your team, you need to be confident in your solo abilities. A team of strong individual players who can hold their own, who understand the nuances of Tarkov, transforms from a mere group of players into a formidable force. But let me show you another example. Marco and I needed to do some missions on customs, and we found ourselves in a tricky situation. So get this, the cargo plane is above me so I can't hear a goddamn thing. But luckily, Marco's on the construction site, and he's got the place locked down. I take him out and run to cover to heal my thorax. So that information saved me, and we were just about to move out, but then I heard something on the other side of the wall. I took him out as well, but I can't tell you how many times I've died through this hole while I was new to the game. And then things started to unfold a lot quicker. And we found out we were getting attacked by a whole squad. I ran back to the construction site to regroup with Marco, but we decided not to rush, but instead stay put and try to defend. He spots two more players entering through the hole in the wall, so he takes cover on the staircase, and I push back to my old spot to cover the approach, because if they try to go upstairs, I'll be the first to see him. Three down so far, which means we have at least one more player unaccounted for. And as usual, I decide to bait some shots. And as anticipated, they move to the hill, pretty much the only spot they can get an angle from into the construction site, which means Marco has to come down. And we have to reposition, because you should always be on the lookout for this angle. So I take out an AK from one of the fallen dudes, lay down suppressing fire toward the hill, and we slowly move up, because we don't know how many are left, or if it's a different team, and we have so many angles to cover. So I tried my best to stay as close to hard cover as possible, and lo and behold, one of them decided to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit of tanker. Here we go. So that was the last guy we saw, so far. So having saved each other multiple times that raid, it would have been a totally different story had I been alone. And of course, becoming a decent team takes time, and a lot of trial and error. So hone your solo skills, then bring that expertise into your team. Combine your strengths, cover each other's weaknesses, and communicate like your life depends on it. Increasing grip by 7%. Checking short off. Alright. I'm going upstairs so I don't get in your shot. Well, I definitely heard that. I see flashlights. One dead. Good. 
You can't stop moaning. I have that effect on people as well. His favorite cartoon must be Moana. Dude, wow. As we draw the curtains on today's masterclass in Escape from Tarkov, let's take a moment to reflect on the arsenal of knowledge we've unpacked. From the stealthy nuances of situational awareness, to the adrenaline rush of tactical movement, from mastering the intricacies of map knowledge, to breaking the chains of gear fear, and finally, the symphony of successful team play. We've journeyed through the art of turning chaos into strategy, of transforming lone wolves into pack leaders, we've dissected what it takes to not just survive in Tarkov but to thrive. But now I turn to you, the real heroes behind the screen. How will you rewrite your story in Tarkov? You know, every story adds to the legend that has escaped from Tarkov. And if you've enjoyed this deep dive and crave more insights, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until our paths cross again, stay curious, stay creative, and above all, keep pushing the boundaries. And I'll see you in the next one.